Hello, this is Mike from Dimensional Walking. Today we're going to talk about a group of alien beings called the Archons. Okay? Since the beginning of the human timeline, there has been a group of beings called the Archons. Some people say they have controlled our reality for thousands of years. Now, I've gotten some of this information from research I've done over the many years and books I've read, but I've also gotten a lot of my information from my abductee and contactee uh, interviews I've done probably for over 50 years. Um, not that everything exactly what they have said matches, but the traits of these beings and some of the descriptions of what they look like do match, okay? just so you know. So I've drawn from all different genres and sources to kind of do this presentation, just so you know. Uh, but I do believe there's a lot of truth here. And I've always believed there's a lot of truth here because throughout many of our videos, I touch on it, okay? But I'm not believing all of it hook, laying, or sinker, for sure, okay? Um, so this group that I'm calling the Archons, that are called the Archons, seem to be comprised of gray aliens and reptilians, okay? And this group searches out planets like Earth looking for emotional beings like humans, okay? So, one of the other things I would tell you, this is pretty out there stuff, okay? I think there's many people out there who do believe this the way I believe it, and there's many people that are going to, you know, not believe it at all. So if you're one of those people that aren't interested in anything like an Archon, uh, then why don't you just click off right now and move on. So, you know, I don't want to waste any of your time. So anyways, so let's talk a little bit of uh, kind of a Greek history um, uh, about uh, the subject matter. And so let's go back to the very beginning. According to Greek mythology, there was a, a goddess energy on earth called Sophia. Sophia, okay? And Sophia decided to, um, this energy decided to create uh, earth, you know, this beautiful paradise uh, for her human beings, uh, uh, humans and animals, etc. And this sounds very familiar to other creation uh, scenarios, okay, from other types of religions or, or, or you know, theories, etc. And so about 250,000 years ago, the Archons showed up and they started messing with Sophia's world. You know, as the uh, Archons started causing uh, chaos among the humans, this heightened degree of emotional energy that the humans produce. So chaos, crisis, wars, and suffering are all the fertilizer serves of emotional acceleration. And this is a food source they, the Archons, want and need to survive and prosper. So Sophia was not able to totally defend the earth, okay, from the Archons. So she decided to make herself part of the planet itself, which we'll call Mother Earth, or Gaia, which I believe does exist. I believe Mother Earth does exist. And so Gaia, over the years, or Mother Earth, has tried her darndest to balance out the Archons and the humans so that the humans could basically prosper and would grow in numbers. Because this happened, there were more humans the Archons, through their manipulation of man and woman, have polluted Mother Earth to weaken her, her ability basically to, to control the energy-sucking beings that have threatened all of our ecosystems on Earth. Okay, I think we're all in agreement. Our ecosystems today are in pretty bad shape. Okay, So these greys and the uh, reptilians... Uh, eat our emotional, uh, our emotions, basically, you know, and this, this uh, influencing 
it's, a lot of this has to also do with the influences that they've put on surrogates and mind-controlled humans. So they're using humans, basically, to help control other humans, okay? These, these surrogates are humans in high-powered positions, such as uh, among the very elite of our societies. So this is really the best way to control a culture, is to do it in a very stealthy fashion because it is easier to man manipulate and accomplish their agenda. And that's exactly what the Archons have done. And this is what the Archons have done for over thousands of years. This has been going on for a very long time. And they also have moved around in, in like the secret societies we all talk about, the Illuminati, the Skull and Bones, the Vatican elites, and many other groups that have harbored um, the Archons. And of course, there's other groups uh, within the government, of course, uh, agencies within the government that I'm not going to name for, for really good reasons, okay? And of course, it isn't just the American governments, many of the Western countries. Uh, I cannot speak for any Eastern countries or Asian countries, but I can definitely speak towards Western countries that have these kind of rogue agencies that are kind of riddled with archons. But I, I want to also mention that within these agencies that I'm kind of referring to, and even some of the uh, these groups, these other groups, uh, uh, you know, the Masons and some of the other ones, there are good people in there. There are good people that are trying to balance and push back on the evil or the bad, okay? Um, then there's the corporate world, okay? So the corporate world is, is I would like to say, is riddled with psychopaths. Um, you know, they would basically sell their mother's soul to make a buck, and they have done that over and over again. So they would also, you know, pollute and destroy our planet to advance the Archon's agenda, creating an environment of much suffering, as much suffering as possible, to feed their enormous appetite. Besides the emotional en energy, they have a great interest in human souls and try to capture them as they are released at death. Okay? I guess we'll call them soul catchers. Um, the energy from the body is said to be, the energy from the body at death is said to be the, the super nectar, nectar of human existence. So after 50 years of working with abductees and contactees, I have heard uh, you know, that greys and reptilians are very much against nuclear war. Now, I've talked about this. I've done several videos on this in the past. And one of the reasons is that uh, nuclear, uh, nuclear bombs basically destroy the soul of humans. Okay? So they do not want to kill human souls because basically this is their, their caviar, their tri truffle on their plate. And they want that one to stay that way. So that's why I've said that it's most unlikely after the Japanese basically, uh, you know, were bombed by the Americans during World War II, um, the aliens pretty much stepped in, have been there to stop that type of thing because of the soul, destroying the souls. They can't have that. They don't want that. Okay. Archons... Uh, have stated before, as I have stated before, our cunning and ruthless group with little or no emotional investment in anything but to their own self, okay? Again, they've been here for thousands of years and their overall influence has varied as the power of the earth has changed and other non-human groups have come and gone during the Archon's occupation of our home. Archons have always been here. There's been other groups of aliens, alien beings that have come and maybe interfered or tried to get involved, but the Archons are still here. They absolutely are still here. If the Archons weren't here, we would not have war. We'd have peace. Everything would be great. 
uh, well, I don't know how we 100% great, but definitely they're in the mix and they're the ones causing the issues, okay? That's in my estimation and, and some other people's estimation. So the first wa wave to def defeat them would be to know that they actually exist. Okay, that is really critical. And, and the fact, also knowing the fact that they are sucking our emotional energy. Uh, this drain of humanity, this drain of this energy, if it continues, will probably leave us a zombie type civilization. Uh, and they would still get the same thing. You know, they could still get that emotional uh, nectar or the emotional, uh, what they need to survive from even zombies, okay? Maybe even more. I'm not really sure about that, but zombies do give off a lot of emotional, uh, this emotional energy. Uh, anyways, the, no the next thing we need to do is we m need to be fearless and not fearful. Um because, of course, the fear is the thing. The fear is the most, par most powerful emotion that we have. Outside the soul itself, fear is the, most, the thing that they crave the most. Okay? So, if we're fearless, we diminish their food source. And we can slowly starve them out. Okay? Now, I've talked about fear and fearlessness throughout my videos, throughout our videos, throughout my articles and my, our website, um, this is absolutely critical to survival of the human race, okay? And finally, peace and love produce stability and tranquility. Uh, we, uh, we could stop uh, wars, conflict. We can break this cycle. Archons will retreat and we will gain our stability back. Humans will return to from this invisible bondage we've been under for thousands of years. Most of the human race has been has not been aware of this tremendous weight that's been on our shoulders, a weight that has kept us in a stupor about our true nature, and we have lost our ability to become a universal being that our Creator intended us to be. We are creators. We are manifestors. We are godlike in many ways. Um, and, you know, our God, I guess, our Christian God, or, or many gods uh, from other religions, you know, are talk about being made in, in our own image, or, or we are made in his own image, or her own image. Um, so the archons are trying to take this away from us, and always have been. So let's not let them take it away. Anyways, with that said... Uh, you have a great day and happy trails until we meet again. Bye-bye.